or our next speaker is uh, Sagid Aliot, who is a professor of uh, engineering, ma mapping and geoinformation engineering at the Technion Institute of, of Israel. Um, and he'll be presenting work done with his uh, students, right, uh, Sagid? Yes. Uh, and a very interesting one about uh, promoting geoliteracy. So uh, thank you, Sagid. I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Yair, for the introduction. And my, my apologies that I couldn't participate. It seems like a very interesting and fruitful event. Uh, I'll try my best uh, remotely. Um, so yes, this is a research led by uh, Dalit Lam. She's a PhD student from uh, the um, education uh, faculty at the Technion, together with Ayelet uh, Baram Sabari, which is a professor at the same uh, faculty. Um, and the idea is how to promote uh, geoliteracy uh, through geospatial citizen science. Just a, a brief introduction. So much of my uh, research is uh, with, uh, of course, mapping and, and uh, mostly uh, participatory mapping. And one of our, I would say, maybe problems is when we work with contributed data, especially OpenStreetMap, is the completeness issue. So. When uh, when uh, I do some kind of either application or implementation, uh, uh, some of the drawback is that I'm not certain that all the data that I use I, I, I need in order to to for the process to be uh, scalable is in the in there. So the idea is to see how we can uh, join forces, I would say, uh, and see uh, how we can. Uh, do some kind of a citizen science project in which I am uh, I as a scientist. Uh, need the collaboration of, of people in order for them to contribute data that I, I need in OSM, and I will go into that in a minute. And also to see whether it can uh, promote or encourage some education and more specifically geoliteracy. So uh, citizen science in general, you, you, you see some bullets here. Um, I would say it's something, it's not really something new, but um, incorporating mapping and, and assignments that uh, require some geographic uh, knowledge in them. I would say it's something that uh, happens in the last uh, decade or so. And, um, and there isn't much research uh, when uh, we discuss uh, uh, contributed data or participatory mapping. Uh, and this is the idea basically of uh, this research. So coming from the educational, educational side, so um, the researchers, uh, Dalit and Ayelet, wanted to see whether they can raise new ideas and, and I would say even better understanding in how you can encourage geoliteracy through some very specific, uh, I would say, tasks, assignments, uh, learning uh, activities in the class um, in order to improve geoliteracy. Because uh, some research shows that uh, geoliteracy, especially in, in, in the, uh, with the young um, is is not very good and I, I will show an example later on um, some of which is related to the use of, of smartphones and such uh, I wouldn't go into detail into that but the idea is, was to see whether we can improve the current uh, geoliteracy uh, level in schools uh, and improve knowledge skills um, uh, values uh, geospatial thinking interactions etc cetera, etc cetera, through this uh, activity so more into detail, the project is called Landmarks for Accessible Space. And again, as I said earlier, the, the idea was to gain better understanding regarding the development of geoliteracy in the framework of participatory mapping uh, in school. Um, in brackets, I would say we also wanted to see whether uh, it has some kind of an uh, affiliation or contribution to daily life, other than specifically for this project. And I, I, I will show our analysis on that later on. And on, on the, I would say on the mapping or our same side, what the students had to do was to map missing features into OSM. And I will talk about that uh, in more detail uh, soon. The idea was to encourage them uh, to, um, to go outside, um, to open an app, I will show that later, and then collect some missing data into uh, OSM. Basically, the idea is that um, there is an a, a application or implementation in which we are we, we are uh, we are able to calculate more, I would say, customized routes uh, that are safe, that are accessible uh, for a, a visually impaired pedestrians. So this was the research I was involved in, 
and we, we uh, decided to join forces together. So on the left side, you can see uh, the citizen science project. And on the right side is the, basically the evaluation um, and analysis we did to see whether this interve intervention project really worked. So I would not go into much details. Um, you perhaps uh, heard Akitov uh, an half an hour ago. Um, but basically, there is an, an application in which we use OpenStreetMap. We use some uh, predefined constraints over same data and such. Um, there are two articles that are published on that, and we are able to uh, calculate uh, optimized walking routes for visual uh, uh, impaired pedestrians based on some very specific rules and analysis of the of the data. Uh, but the problem is that uh, a lot of data is missing, especially outside the cities. And the idea was to see whether uh, uh, we can encourage students to go outside and map. During that process, they gain some new knowledge, some new expertise, some new tasks and assignments. And of course, we uh, enrich our OpenStreetMap map uh, and, and uh, basically can, can, uh, uh, um, can make a more scalable, I would say, solution. So here you have an over, a very general overview of, of the uh, uh, participants. They were involved 13 schools, uh, roughly around 600 uh, uh, students. I must say that we started this project before uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we had some problems during that. So the, 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 I would say the project was really, really very dynamic because we had to change things uh, all of the time. Uh, at first, they, uh, the students came to the Technion, they met uh, many people, uh, including uh, me and other uh, experts in the field. But later on, we shifted everything to Zoom, uh, to YouTube videos, etc. Uh, but basically, uh, we are now in the process of uh, analysis of the second cycle uh, of these uh, students. And on the left, you can see the research tools, basically, um, um, they 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 uh, they had some kind of a pre uh, questionnaires in which they had to uh, we analyze their existing knowledge, uh, um, what they know they don't know about maps in general, about things like navigation, visual impaired pedestrian, visual impaired people in, in general, um, um, etc. Uh, we also made many uh, various observations. We did some analysis on the on the data that they collected, and then later on. Uh, the lead uh, conducted another uh, semi-structured interview in order to really analyze the differences in before and after, and I will show some details uh, in a minute. So apologies for the Hebrew, but this is basically, I would say, the, the snake diagram in which uh, uh, the project was implemented. But you can see here some very uh, general um, um, uh, um, uh, sections within the, the model. Um, so. Um, uh, so the, the teachers were really uh, very much involved in that. Uh, we had to go through a, a very, I would say, um, extensive process in order to improve everything because we had to interview uh, the, the, the students, uh, the parents had to, um, to allow their participation, etc. Uh, during this uh, project, we developed uh, an app specifically designed to map specific features. I will show that in a minute. It's called Mundi. It's accessible currently uh, for Android only, hopefully for Apple as well. And, and as I said, because of Corona, we had to do a lot of uh, e-learning. So uh, many videos and many guest lectures were uh, streamed via uh, Zoom. Here you have, uh, you, have you can see several, um, I would say, um, assignments, tasks, uh, and activities in which the students were involved. Uh, so, for instance, on the left hand side, you can see some data that was collected with the Mundi app. I will show that in a minute. In the middle, you see that the students were, uh, were basically uh, involved in, in specific assignments, showing them or uh, exposing them to the life of uh, visually impaired people in general. Uh, they came to the Technion, they did some mapping um, assignments in the Technion before they went out into their area of residence uh, to map the missing uh, data. Uh, also, there were a lot of assignments and questionnaires they had to uh, follow. They also did some analysis in which they, uh, they analyzed the routes that were calculated before uh, their mapping of data and after to see whether they understand better the environment, its morphology, 
uh, and other factors that influence the change of, 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 of the route. Basically, we ask them to see whether they understand why the route changes after they map uh, missing data. Another problem that we, we saw that you can see it on the top. So basically, uh, many of the schools were in, in villages outside cities. A lot of data was missing. So a part of this data was uh, basically uh, done by us. So we mapped missing streets and missing uh, uh, buildings because it was easier for them to orient in, in the field when they mapped the data. But some classes also did that assignment uh, uh, remotely uh, from the class. And I think this is a very nice contribution to our SEM in general. And on the, on the left, uh, on the bottom, you can see a route that changes uh, before and after mapping. So basically the students could really see uh, how their mapping influences the outcome. In this case, a route that now should be customized to visual impaired participants. Uh, you can see some activities here where they visited uh, the Technion. Um, they also learned on the, on the right hand side of top, you, they also learned some problems that exist in their vicinity. For instance, uh, trees that are blocking the sidewalks and such. So basically, they really had an extensive, uh, I would say, um, um, an extensive uh, variety of, of, of teachings that exposed them not only to mapping, but also to other important uh, issues. One of, the, uh, one of the things we also did is to develop an app. Basically, the app is designed only to map data that uh, is important for the route planning um, uh, engine. Uh, basically, I would say it's uh, sidewalks uh, um, and intersections and more uh, accessible data. We implemented some gamification, so you can see it on the right, um, who mapped the most uh, map, missing map features. They had some assignments, you can see it the second picture from the right, they had some assignments, and if they fill these assignments, they get more points. So basically, we tried to see how this uh, encouraged them to uh, map more data. And you can see some uh, screens from uh, the app itself. So on the left-hand side, this is the, the, basically they had to log in, they had to open an OSM uh, user, and based on this user, they could uh, uh, upload uh, missing data into OSM. So on the, on the left, you can see uh, basically we had several types. So these are the object types. Object types are points. Um, and then once, once they map a, a new crosswalk, for instance, in the middle, then they have all the tags that can be updated within OSM. And this is very important for us, for visual impaired pedestrians. So we need to know all this information beforehand, before sending someone who is visually impaired into that intersection. So just as an example, I would prefer to send someone to a very monitored worst walk instead of one that is not monitored, for instance, with traffic lights, with textile paving, etc. So this is very important uh, tagging or information in general with, within this app. Here you can see also uh, we allow them to update uh, tags for um, linear uh, features uh, because uh, we need to know crosswalk. Uh, sorry, uh, sidewalks, sorry. So we need to know if there is a sidewalk on this uh, linear segment and if yes, on, on which side or both sides. So they could, they could also update this tag. And the, here you can see a list of all the obstacles and here you can see some examples in which they, when they went, they also documented some of these mapping activities uh, with the camera. So you can see some examples on the left. Um, so I would go into the results. So here you can see an overview of some of the mapping. Uh, so you will see that they were quite active, I would say. Basically, the teacher told them to go out. They were uh, uh, divided into groups. Each group went to a, a, a specific area and mapped this data. So you can see it here. Uh, in total, um, there are around uh, more than around five, this, this is at least at this moment, we're still analyzing all the, 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 the data that was uploaded, but currently we have around 5,000 uh, edits, I would say. It can be new uh, features, but also update uh, tags and, and, and such. So you can see the, the volume here, some of the schools. Um, and then we did some kind of an analysis whether to see whether they really gained new uh, skills, new knowledge. And here you can see some questions that they were asked. Based on this question, we did the analysis to see their, 
the differences of the before and after uh, the intervention. The intervention took around two or three months uh, each class. So we did a before and after questionnaire and some uh, analysis. So these are some of the questions that uh, basically show that. And you can see that uh, on all of the different, I would say, parameters that uh, measure geoliteracy, there was an improvement. Some was, uh, some was um, a bit mild, but there's, there's some that were really, really higher. And basically, if I can say in general, we saw that the, the intervention project was really, really uh, had a high contribution. So you can see here the spatial awareness was uh, really higher. Uh, also, they they uh, they the self esteem as, as in scientific thinking was also uh, higher. And basically, we came to the conclusion that uh, the, the the intervention project really really helped. We also wanted to see this on a, on a broader scale. So uh, we did a, a very long uh, survey with uh, with students. And we asked them a lot of questions. Some of them uh, required special thinking and understanding about the COVID uh, pandemic. So basically, they had a lot of questions with maps, without maps in general. And you can see here that the students that participated in this project uh, had higher scores in general. So there's a really uh, nice, um, uh, you can really see it visible, uh, you can really see it and you can really understand it from, I would say, the, the parameters, the values, and such that. The program contributed not only contributed to OpenStreetMap because new data is uploaded, but also for the students themselves, and it raises new ideas of how this, how geoliteracy can be taught in schools. So here I took two of the sentences, one of student and one of teacher, and basically uh, um, most of the students really appreciated the, uh, the intervention. They really gained a new understanding and uh, a, a better uh, a look on mapping in general, but also on the community that they are now contributing to. So uh, these are the teacher, but also the, sorry, the student, but also the teacher uh, really stated specifically that uh, she believed that the mapping activity was really, really um, well adopted by the students and very much contributed to this project. Uh, some uh, very general uh, uh, conclusions. Um, so one thing we saw that areas outside cities are not well mapped. This is not 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 something uh, new. I would say for the for us as a community, but it exists, and this is something I think we should somehow uh, think of. Cities are well mapped, but going outside is a bit more problematic. And uh, we saw that students uh, prefer to map uh, objects or points because it's much much easier to identify, and then and uh, put on the map itself. Um, tags were also, I would say, here and there. So uh, if there were many tags, they sometimes had problem to map and update the tags. And also the linear, um, uh, the linear uh, features uh, were also, I would say, less favored, okay? Because it requires a better orientation and, and looking around and understanding how the road intersects with the intersections and such, the direction. It was a bit more assignment for them, and it took them more time to um, to, to identify. I, I, I have one or two more slides, and we also saw that there was some kind of an effect that uh, on, on on the class level. So some teachers put more effect on, I would say, intersections. So these classes met more intersections, for instance. So there was some kind of a deviation uh, in that. And we also saw some problems, and this was fixed in the middle, that uh, if they went out as, as a group, they sometimes met a, a specific feature twice. So that's why we divided them into uh, couples and sent them to a um, distant area so they won't map um, uh, a, a feature twice. Um, so to conclude, so we saw, we saw that uh, this activity um, introduces new concepts and, uh, and basically contributes to geoliteracy. So the students that were involved really gained new expertise, new skills, uh, better knowledge, and uh, self-esteem. I think it's very important. Um, and also, uh, it gave us, we are still working on that, but it gave us some guidelines or some ideas of how to incorporate uh, these teaching uh, uh, systems in, in schools. So how to improve, now we are in the 21st century, you know, smartphones, uh, GIS, QGIS is available, uh, and 
students are using maps all of the time. So how this can be incorporated into the teaching. And we have some ideas of how this can contribute in, in general. Um, so these are, I hope it will be valuable, but you have two few codes if you want to try this uh, route planning and also to download the Mundi app. I hope it will be available to iOS pretty soon. And basically I'm done. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sagi. Very, very interesting uh, and uh, unique kind of work. Uh, I see uh, we have uh, two questions on uh, Venulus. So, uh, in the meanwhile, other people are welcome to post their questions there. Otherwise, we'll try to get questions from the crowd in the in the auditorium. So, um, first question is: I've heard of mixed results when including gamification uh um to encourage mapping and that was mostly for adults how is your experience with students did you encounter vandalism uh to climb the leaderboard um so i will start for, so basically we didn't really analyze how communication contributed or not i didn't see vandalism we had some so i didn't see any problems that were derived from the gamification because I, I would say this is a kind of a short term project. Um, we are now trying to see whether they continue to update uh, uh, the map, as you mentioned before in the presentation before the retention, to see whether they still contribute, they still have some kind of a sense that they need to contribute. So we are now working on that to see uh, whether it is still there. Uh, we didn't see any vandalism. We had some problems, for instance, as I mentioned, if they went in, in big groups, we saw that uh, we had redundant features, I would say. So several intersections uh, nearby um, and, and many, many trees, uh, for instance, that are blocking the, the sidewalk. So this was fixed once we understand that uh, they should uh, uh, go into the field in smaller groups, but we didn't see any vandalism actually. It, uh, I think they had some kind of a sense of, um, a sense of that they're doing something really important and they shouldn't really mess with the data, I would say. Okay, thanks. Uh, what did the existing mapping tools like Street Complete and Field Papers lack that made you develop a dedicated app? Um, so um, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm not really familiar with what you say. I, I guess it's not really, it's not existing apps. Uh, it's some kind of, uh, I don't know, it's an algorithm that still missing data, perhaps? I'm not no, I don't, those are mapping apps. But I think okay, okay. So we did try some mapping apps. Um Vespucci, I think, was one of them, if I'm not mistaken. The student it was too too hard for the students. It, it since in, in these apps you can uh, you can map everything. Uh, they didn't find their uh, hands and legs in there. Um, we had we tried to start with that, and that's why we we developed our own app because they just couldn't work with that. I think you need to have some kind of a a basic understanding, some good experience with mapping in order to really dive into this. And again, you have to understand these are students on the ninth grade. They don't do much mapping. This is the first time I would say they contribute mapping data. So we really wanted it to, to, to for the process to be as easy as possible. So we allowed only the features that uh, we needed and, and basically took out everything else that was redundant, at least uh, on our term. Yeah, I think we need to remember that uh, as mappers, mapping POIs is very difficult even uh, for us and time consuming. And we can go back to uh, Ilya's talk about the every door and see how much impact that that's going to make uh, uh, when things were made accessible. So I can certainly relate to why you needed those this app. Uh, last questions, last question before we wrap up. Was there a follow up questionnaire after the testing period if the student still continued to map like 6 months or 12 months later? Okay, so, so, um, it, this, it, this is a work in progress. Um, I, so we are still, so we, there were some problems, um, for, um, so we have, we have, the, we have, we have some problems to retrieve the data from all the students. So we are still working on that. In general, I don't think we saw any continuation, uh, maybe here and there. We saw some students, for instance, that uh, mapped also in other areas, but this was, I would say, more or less during the period of the project. 
Um, we didn't see any, any much continuation. Um, also, you have to understand that uh, once they went into the, at least in small, in small villages or small cities, once they went into the neighborhood, basically they mapped almost everything. So you can't really see anything new there because I would say it's, mo it's mostly mapped, but we are still working on that. It's, it's a good question. Um, my, I, I can say my, um, my feeling is that it will probably will not continue to map. Um, this is at least, at least, at least these students, uh, they are young, they have other things on their head. So I had the sense that they enjoyed the project. They really understood the importance of it, but then they went to do other, other important stuff. Yeah, I think it's, it's also a matter of to what extent they were, uh, exposed to uh to osm in an unmediated way which probably didn't happen uh i i, I would stop here because i need to start the, the next uh, uh talk thank you very much Sagi.